Okay, next question comes from... Sorry, one sec. Uh, Evan. Evan says... Are you at all concerned with the breach of U.S. debt ceiling of the U.S. debt ceiling? Does this event or any theories of what comes next affect your organizing in any way? Yeah, so this is something we actually talked about at our last GA, kind of in passing. Um, I'm not. I don't really have a comment on like the debt ceiling and like uh, like McCartney or whatever his name is, McCarthy and um, Biden, uh, Joe Biden are going to be meeting pretty soon to stop that or something but it's like a it's a common trope but i think i read a new york a new york times article it was quite interesting just talking about how um the debt ceiling conversation is like it's probably not like it's not gonna happen like i think they're gonna do they're gonna come to some compromise you know and um but they have to just kind of beat their chest and pretend like it's a bipartisan you know republican versus democrat issue you have fiscal conservatives versus like the big government whatever's uh, donkeys or something and the reality is though that um just reading between the lines of like this new york times article that i was reading was um that it's not so much about um the, the what it's revealing is is the precarious the precarious place that the united states holds now as the you know as a the declining uh financial kind of superpower and economic superpower meaning that the kind of bond markets and all the kind of, you know, wizardry that goes into finance capital that the state plays a heavy role in, in regulating, <clears throat> um, is, you know, is it's, it's being questioned by a lot of world powers. Uh, and this has to do a lot of, with a lot of like, uh, geopolitical shifts, uh, the de-dollarization that's happening across the world and, you know, uh, de like the BRICS countries moving, uh, away from the U S dollar, um, and we see a lot of that. And I think um, it so, yeah, we do have to think about that because, you know, um, when we think of empires and collapse or capitalist uh, societies who that are declining, uh, fascism is like emergency capitalism, right? It's like the, the handbrake that comes out. Um, so, yeah, we do have to think about that. And we are seeing that, you know, I think we have to take seriously. I'm, I'm not on the, I'm not one of the like the people who are like uh, really pithy about um or flippant about like illiberalism and you'll just side with anyone who's like going to own the libs because fascists own the libs and they have a critique of state power. Um, and they have a critique of, of finance capital and all these other things too. Um, and they see these moments as time as a time to emerge. And we are seeing that, you know, and, um, I think as people on the left and <clears throat> anti-imperialists, we have to be very conscious about, you know, how we talk and like the, you know, we were, we were just also talking about how this debt ceiling is, is kind of a, a, you know, a symptom of a bigger problem. And we can see that specifically in life chances in the broader, <clears throat> you know, uh, population living in the United States and North America, but specifically native people, like our life expectancy has dropped by like six years for native men. It's dropped, you know, by like eight or nine years. Um, and these aren't like, COVID deaths. These are overdoses. These are suicide. Suicide has picked up and increased in native communities. And we see this as part of kind of a broader structural economic issue. Um, so I think like we do, we do see the debt ceiling as, as sort of the debt ceiling conversation as part of a larger geopolitical shifts, um, as well as sort of more uh, like grounded, um, you know, uh, economic restructuring that's happening that's really kind of, you know, impacting Native people at a higher degree because of, you know, the, the structures, the colonial structures and economic structures that exist that imperil our, our lives to begin with. And I would say if this is happening to any other kind of demographic within an, any other part of the world or any other country, people would be screaming at the top of their lungs for like intervention or some kind of like that this is genocide, you know, and just to kind of put a anecdote <laughs> to this, I have a, like a morbid, um, uh, sort of practice of look of reading the obituaries of, from my hometown. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, a lot of, you know, it's the, a lot of the obituaries in our, um, our fun local funeral home are uh, of either older white people or really young native people, people born in the eighties and the nineties. Um, 
and yeah, it's really disproportionate. People that I went to high school with, people you know who I who I grew up with, and so it, it is pretty bad, you know. And so I think when we think about this, it's like we can't just be flippant and say, "Oh, de-dollarization, geopolitical shifts," because we know since we don't have power right now that the you know the 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 deleterious effects of this shift and the decline of U.S. empire are going to be outsourced as they always are onto indigenous people, marginalized people, and poor people. So I do not celebrate that kind of economic decline at all because it actually means death for us. Um, but that me also means that we should be lighting a fire under our butts to get out there and organize and build an alternative.